you today, Akhil. Looking forward today to uh, discussing with you collaborative commerce with Supply Chain 4.0. Uh, can you first provide a, a brief background of yourself? Hi, Dustin. It's a pleasure all mine. Uh, my name is Akhil. Uh, I have been working across the Fortune 500 companies as well as several successful startups in the area of supply chain for over 12 years. During these uh, 12 years of stint, I have covered end-to-end -end supply chain, including planning, distribution, manufacturing, customer service, and procurement. I see myself as having gone through the supply chain at various industries and companies uh, at pretty different levels of involvement as well as engagement. Well, my first question is, uh, can you discuss some of the issues in supply chain and some of the bottlenecks that are happening? So that's a pretty interesting topic because what I see supply chain is a very, very new field or a function within the business verticals. We have been hearing about sales, marketing through the early 19th century. However, supply chain just evolved pretty recently. It was, in fact, hardly 40 years old concept when people said uh, and the word supply chain was actually coined in. Uh, ever since the supply chain being a function has evolved, uh, supply chain has been considered as a cost center by most of the organizations, including leading organizations. And that's where it is supposed to be more like a supporting function or a supporting role, uh, unlike the core functions like sales and marketing. Uh, and this has uh, led to a pretty limited uh, development of supply chains over a period of time. However, what we realized in the recent past of say last 15, 20 years, that supply chain ha has enormous capabilities of transforming a company's bottom line, especially in terms of transforming the return on investments, because it is all about how beneficially you can turn around the assets, how effectively and efficiently you can service your customers, how are you able to uh, quantify yourself across four basic parameters, one being customer service, second being cost, third being quality, and fourth being reliability. Uh, most companies consider supply chain as a bottleneck uh, because of the lack of transparency and visibility in the system. And that has been a, because our systems within this function has been pretty dated and it has not evolved. However, as we see, there has been a lot of current emphasis in the transformational journey for supply chain. There have been a lot of evol evolution which is happening. And I'm sure it will lead to uh, supply chain being a leading function, especially in the new e-commerce world and the digital economy. Is there any more you could talk, you could say about? Right. Right. So uh, in, in the current context, uh, as I said, I mean, Generally, uh, companies imagine sales and marketing to be the profit center. However, sales and uh, marketing is only bringing in the customer insights and bringing in the your profits. However, supply chain is the function which controls most of the costs, including procurement, uh, operations, manufacturing, logistics, distribution, and also Hidden, hidden costs like total cost of ownership, which includes customer service over a long period of time and building a reliable uh, infrastructure for servicing the customers. Having said that, what I see is in today's supply chain, there are bottlenecks because A, the supply chain, unlike other functions, uh, is a very, very collaborative fun role. It cuts across almost every function within the organization. It requires a lot more of cross-functional interfaces, which means it requires a lot more of uh, visibility and transparency across the different functions. However, uh, at times we see that supply chains uh, are basically working under silos because it's pretty difficult to have a real-time information map 
across various functions. And that's where, what is one of the most limiting factor. And in fact, one of the most frustrating factor for many top level executives to take a call on because they don't know where exactly the inventory lies, how much is the inventory in place, uh, what is in transit, uh, who are the vendors and suppliers, is are they all abiding by the code of conduct? So in total, there is a huge issue in terms of overall visibility and the real-time information flow. Right, so uh, let me back up a bit and also explain as to what is happening in the world of supply chain. So supply chain eventually is moving into a pretty fast transition game especially with the onset of e-commerce. There was not much of a talk of Amazon or Flipkart or companies which are into e-commerce space five to 10 years ago, which means there has been a lot of something which has changed over the last 10 years. And what changed is about the flow of information using the internet of things. What we have seen is there are a lot of technology transfer or information flow which has started happening across the value chain using Internet of Things. And these IoT technologies are scaling up on an everyday basis, assumed to be to a tune of 30 billion pieces of IoT devices uh, by end of 2022, which means almost everything you touch, you are providing some signals, some information, through the cloud or the internet to the service providers. This means the technologies exist to digitize the entire supply chain. So in a version of 4.0, which we say is digital economy, we are looking that the supply chains today would actually evolve to the next levels, wherein people will have a lot more of visibility and a lot more of transparency. That is because as, as supply chain players, we would be looking at digital footprints of physical assets. So today, for example, we are discussing over a digital media right now and we are recording it across. This is a digital footprint of what we, we are actually trying to communicate. Similar thing can happen as a digital footprint for a flow of material. Imagine a material being, uh, imagine case of a Airbus which is getting uh, made in France. Now, Airbus requires more than a million particles to be assembled from various vendors globally. So they buy products from China, India, Asia, Australia, and all other places. And they come all together and assemble it across in a particular location or a factory. Today, the biggest problem for any of the, uh, of the manufacturing plants is that their inventories don't have a visibility. They don't know how much of the inventory is in transit, what amount of the inventory would be available to them, and whether that inventory qualifies to be fitting into their specifications. Hence, if everything gets digitized, which is when we are talking of a digital supply chain, we are talking then eventually of a smart manufacturing, we are talking of digital products, and we are talking of data analytics, which becomes part of the core competency. Evolving all of this together would help make uh, the supply chain more resilient and responsive and will be really helpful for the leadership of the organization to take decisions on time and thus orchestrate a supply chain design, network design, which is pretty much more responsive and more agile to fulfill customer requirements. So I believe uh, this leads into collaborative commerce. And how does that happen is, you know, the digital supply chains, once they are digitized, they, so, so let me back up a bit. The current systems on supply chains are pretty desperate. So means they, some of the suppliers have an Oracle system, some of the suppliers have a SAP system, others have a different ERP enterprise system. These enterprise systems, 
don't talk to each other and hence it results in broken system of records because of which there are several examples wherein the supply chains gets defunct in a digitized world which will get enabled the supply chains will really help across work work in building collaborative commerce because now you have a real time inventory visibility at your vendor you have a real time visibility in transit and you have a real time visibility across your own locations and places that would really impact a new set of organizational design for supply chain which will help enable virtualized processes and involve flexible and integrated value chain networks thus making collaborative commerce a reality maybe by 2025